Okay, just say a little bit about why we thought it was worth having a seminar series on economics. Being in, in D.C. or being actually anywhere in the country, it's hard not to be frustrated a lot of times by the, the direction of economic debates. Um, very often it seems that the liberal progressive side loses before we even get into it. And, you know, I'm sure you've all heard the line about Democratic Party strategists, you know, they, when they order tanks, they always get a version of the model that has five speeds, four in reverse and one forward in case they're attacked from the rear. And that's often what it feels like in these debates, that half the time we're giving up much of the, much of the battle before you even enter into it. And a lot of that is simply because I think a lot of people in the debates, a lot of people in the country aren't aware of some very, very basic economics. So we figured since we waste a lot of our time doing this stuff, we would inflict some of it on you with the idea that, you know, more people, it would be beneficial to have more people on the liberal side, progressive side, with a better grounding in economics so we don't always get rolled in these debates. Let me just say a, little, a couple things about, you know, the format. We're going to try to stick to this having 45 minutes where I, where I lecture, where I talk. Then we'll have a break so you could all run off, do whatever you have to do. Also, I'm going to insist that people don't, that you have your cell phones turned off. We'll do very bad things to anyone who has a cell phone go off, so please make sure your cell phone is turned off. Um, dur during the question period, I want to restrict, restrict that to questions. So, you know, if you have some grand profound statement, I'm interested in hearing it, but not during that session. So we'll have 45 minutes or so, you know, for questions. And, you know, please try to restrict that to actual questions. Okay. So let me start. I got the technology right. Okay, the four points that I'm calling the, the basics or keys to, to good economics, and the first one is what I'll spend most of the time on, and that's always putting numbers in context. All the time we hear numbers that are very often meaningless to people. That's not to our advantage. We want people to know what numbers mean. We have to have them in context. And I'll go through a number of the ways in which they're generally not in context today but we would like them to be in context. It's to our benefit in context. The stock market's not the economy. This is really a simple, obvious point. Everyone should know this, but I don't know how many times if you turn on the news and you just get, you know, the one, you know, the 10-second blip about the economy, did the stock market go up, did the stock market go down? That's not even, it's not that's not the whole story. It might not even be any of the story. Okay, so I'll just make a couple points about that. The third point, don't let them get away with name-calling. Half the time, you know, you're a big spending liberal. You want taxes. You know, you just throw the name out there. You want the government to intervene. You don't want people to stand, you know, and the whole story is name calling. And we can't let them get away with that because when we do that, we lose. And the last point is just that, you know, we are right. We, there is no contradiction between, you know, things that we might care about, eliminating poverty, ensuring that people have basic social needs, that they have health care. We might say that, that those things would be good even if it did inflict, you know, even if it did cost something. But in fact, you know, there's no evidence very often that that's the case. And the things that the other side wants, that President Bush wants, he wants to always give more tax cuts to his wealthy friends, that hurts the economy. Okay, so we don't have to be defensive. We should know that we're right, because most of the time we are. Okay, starting with context, budget numbers. This is, this is the place where I think it's absolutely most important. All the time, you pick up the newspaper, you listen on television, you hear some, some debate about budget numbers, about the deficit's going to be $350 billion this year, that we're talking about a tax cut that's, you know, $1.2 trillion, that we're proposing, someone's proposing a spending bill for, let's say we're getting more money for child care, $6 billion. No one has any idea what those numbers mean. Okay, and I don't mean just people, I don't mean like, you know, if we go down to Peoria, Illinois, and we, you know, catch someone in the diner there. I don't mean that. I, it's true, they probably don't know what it means either. But I mean, take people with, you know, very well-educated people. Imagine my brother's a lawyer in Seattle. He doesn't know what those numbers mean. You know, you could, so you could get people with college degrees, advanced degrees. Budget wonks know what it means. Maybe a lot of you do know what it means because you're sitting there reading the budget. Okay, but almost no one in the country has any ideas what these number means. And if you took a number that's, you know, that's expressed in millions or billions or trillions, half the time, if you flip that over, you know, if you had a number, if we're talking about Social Security, which I'll come to in a moment, and it's expressed in trillions, half the time, if that were just instead expressed in billions, it wouldn't mean the same thing to people. Okay, people don't know what these numbers mean. 